What's up guys? Welcome back to Robinson Motorsports. I know last episode I said that Frank and Ripper wasn't going to be in the corner for too long. Well, I got a phone call from a friend that one of his buddies has a 1990 KLR 650 that's actually in mint condition. That's kind of running a little funny. It's popping on diesel. Um, he actually wrote it here, which is a plus, because if you can write it to me, then I know that most of the issues are pretty much sorted out. Um, I went to start it today, and I had a little bit of trouble, more than I would actually like to. I was thinking about tinkering with the uh, air mixture screw, but I just decided that if it's not going to start, or if it's, it's going to fire and try to run on choke, then as soon as I turn the choke off, the pilot circuit's definitely messed up. And... The popping on D-cell may be that air shutoff valve in the carb, so I'm hoping it's that. Well, really, I'm not hoping it's that. I'm just hoping it's something that's clogged and an easy fix. But I got a hunch that it's that shutoff valve. So this air filter, um, it's not sticky like I like it. It's real kind of just on there and not doing much. So, and it uh, smells. There's just something I love about these old bikes that are clean mint like this because no one All right, my first little once over on this, other than the air filter not being oiled, um, I found a leak here on the head gas or the valve cover gasket. The sealer he used, it just didn't uh, seal in there. Notice that a little bit before it was kind of leaking down right here from the water jacket. I could see there was leaking here and investigated it came up to there and the guy that used to work on this bike had been in there and adjusted the valves at 1500 miles which was well a couple miles ago but it was 2018 so i think this bike's been sitting for two years um i found the choke cable here is taped up i don't know what that's all about but you can see the case kind of moves in and out a little bit with the choke operation so that's not good. You want your choke to work when you want the choke to work and the choke not to work when the choke doesn't work. Well, you want the choke on when you want the choke on, you want the choke off when you want the choke off. So it uh that kind of needs to be addressed in my eyes. Also, I haven't quite seen what's going on here yet, 
but this is a vacuum line that goes to the pet cock and allows fuel to go into the carburetor and there's tape on it so that kind of worries me i haven't taken the tape off yet but that's kind of another thing i was going to be troubleshooting is the whole um, vacuum system on this carb i don't want to say they're problematic but if there's no vacuum or if there's a leak in it you don't get that good of performance out of it so I'm just gonna go ahead and take this tape off and see what I can find. If it needs, to, if this hose needs to be replaced, I think I have some laying around. If not, I'll order it. It's not a big deal. I just need. All right, so I found out why, well, needs a choke cable because someone put some uh, JB Weld on it here trying to hold it together after they cracked it, and I don't think it did a very good job. then when you put it back in there you can put it the same setting or make adjustments oh, I need a smaller screwdriver All right, from here, we are going to look for the screwdriver that I had. All right, this is a JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard screwdriver. The angle here is a lot different than a regular number two. If we can Put them side by side. You can see it's a lot shorter. Bring it in. You see it's a lot shorter there. So these are, if you use a regular Phillips tool, you're going to strip these screws out no matter what. Just because this angle is too narrow. You want a little bit fatter with the JIC. Or JIS, sorry. Japanese Industrial Standard. Yeah, Vessel. It was like 10... Either way, we're going to go after the... Oh, boing! Aha! Oh, there it is. This guy. This guy, because he goes there. This passage is blocked right here. You won't have proper operation of this, which I don't think is stuck. Guy. 
Oh, if you don't want to come out, you don't have to come out. Jeez. Make sure you check in here first, need the height of the needle. It's got right there. Inspect this diaphragm. Seems to be looking all right. Okay, now. And then in to the pot, there you go. Hot. All right, now that our carb here is cleaned, we are. All right, now that our carb came out of the uh, ultrasonic cleaner, you can see there's still kind of like a little bit of chalkiness to everything. There might be a little bit of dirt still here and there in some crevices, so we're just gonna go. Come on, which way do we go here? Clean out your main. So the carbs all cleaned. Um, I am going to just double check and verify that I have the right jets in there. I may go one richer on the main for the super trap, but I know I have to order a carb kit for it. So hopefully the carb kit comes with an extra size. If it doesn't, or even if it doesn't even come with, I'd, it's like three bucks for another jet. So I may buy it. I may actually have. 148. I might have this one. I'll check. But check those, make sure they're right. Uh, I know that the air screw was definitely not at the right setting. Even for the book, it was really, really, really lean. So I'm going to richen that up a little bit. I'm actually probably going to get them one of the uh, manual adjust ones. I have one on my DR and I'm always messing with it because temperatures change. Um... All right, I got my manual here. Well, it's not mine. It it's um, the gentleman that owns the bike. It's a climber. I really don't like these manuals. They're kind of misleading. They're aftermarket, and just like aftermarket parts, they don't really fit like OEM. Or, in other words, they're worded differently. They have a little bit of misleading sections to them. The layout of it is not ideal, but... I could go on and on and on but this is the manual that I have with me for this bike and it will do for what I need it an exploded view here of X things that the also orientation of brackets and um, just the general assembly things if I'm missing that stopper which I'm not it's right here so, it's always good to have this view, or this exploded view here. Also...
All right, so I got a new float bowl gasket. The one that was on there is kind of flat, and it looks like it may be the original one. So, got a new one of those. I got a new air cutoff valve, which actually came with the small little O-ring here. And the spring, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the choke lever, or the choke nut here, it's an all balls. The plunger kit, I'll probably replace the plunger since it's in here, things like that. So, that I just needed for this nut. That's going to go over here. Got that air screw I was talking about. And a couple of little O-rings that I needed for this guy right here since it's so easy to pull. All right, now comes the fun part. I'll just fight this back out. Spray this whole area down here with shop saw. If you can still see some kind of down in the hole there, you can see where I put a little bit of black was a gasket maker, high temp gasket maker. Right there, it's actually a spot where I was kind of, it was peeled off and I think it was leaking from there. The notes in this climber manual here, that the, um, the guy that dropped his bike off said that the previous mechanic or the previous guy that worked on it, his notes were in there. His notes said that he replaced the gasket, but I don't think he did because this one looks really old and obviously it broke and it's kind of leaking there. So I do know he checked the um, valves. It did seem to be running fine for me without a valve issue, it was more of a carb issue. So I didn't take the cover off, risking damaging that gasket anymore. So I put a little bit of that black RTV on there just to hopefully hold it in a little bit. It shouldn't have that much pressure in it because it's just the valve cover. Um, it's black, so it kind of blends in. It's basically a band-aid. I don't think it's really gonna last that long, but it could last forever. Who knows, right? So maybe the next time an air filter, because I noticed this. As you can see, all right, as you can see, it's all back together. I just fired it up. It runs decent. I still got to go take it for a test drive. Um, it runs actually a hell of a lot better, to tell you the truth. Fine tuning here and there. I still have to see how many um, stacks or whatever is in that super trap. Not really too concerned about it because the way it's running, it's definitely not backfiring or popping on diesel anymore um the fuel in it's kind of brown uh i want to on saturday mornings at 10 o'clock eastern time 